Hey, this is Nisi P of Nisi P Entertainment, and I am back with the fabulous Miss Erica Janelle. <laughs> Hello, Miss Fabulous Nisi P. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, don't you just love her spirit? I mean, she has an awesome spirit. Okay, so Miss Erica, we're going to get right to the point. Um, you and I yes. had a conversation about your nonprofit organization. So mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the ball and let you roll with it, and let's go. Like we always do. Okay. Like we always so, do. <laughs> um, so my nonprofit is called Overcoming Abuse Through Healing. Okay. It's the acronym OATH, O-A-T-H. Mm -hmm. um, and with OATH, it is specifically designed for victims of trauma, various forms of trauma. The main areas that I've been focusing most of my energy and attention on recently has been domestic violence, sexual assault, and human trafficking, because these are areas where um, it's so prevalent right now in the mm -hmm. world, and it's so many, it's such a lack of resources um, or a lack of understanding or knowledge of resources okay. for victims of those types of situations. And so as a victim of, uh, of sexual assault and domestic violence, I take it personal to really do my part to kind of bring uh, awareness and also factor in my life coaching skills to bring about healing and helping people to overcome those challenges that they faced as a result of these incidents. Um, wow. It's really big. Um, you know that I'm coming out with my book. Right. Uh, we are in the final stages. I'm, I'm actually going to be getting it over to the formatter this week. Okay. Um, and then I'll be releasing my self-published autobiography of my book about my personal experiences with abuse. But um, the book is um, also a part of that. And one of the big things that I am looking to do is I am hosting a annual retreat. It'll be our very first one. Okay. And this retreat is going to be for specifically victims of sexual assault and domestic violence. I am literally going to coordinate with facilities in the Maryland, Virginia, and DC areas mm -hmm. um, that have, uh, so say for instance, it's a nonprofit or a community organization that has a rape crisis center or a domestic violence shelter. I am gonna coordinate with these centers in the DMV area and actually pick these ladies up. We're gonna have transportation for them. Okay. We're gonna send them to a, uh, a weekend retreat on a Friday and a Saturday. And we are going to do nothing but healing, meditation, yoga, and like just really loving on each other. Because I feel like that's, you know, people need to know that you're not alone. A lot of times right. when you're a victim, right. there's such a shame associated with sexual assault and domestic violence. You know, you blame yourself. You're like, I'm stupid. How did I put myself in this situation? Mm -hmm. Or you are ashamed because of what you've been through. So this is going to be a safe space for these people to come. I'm going to gather these women and it's going to be only for women right now because I want to keep it safe. I want the women, you know, when you, when you have a little PTSD about certain things, right. you may not be comfortable being around men. Um, so we're going to have security there. We're, I've thought about everything. So we're going to have security there. We're going to have this retreat that's going to be an undisclosed location for their safety. And we're going to just have a healing. I'm bringing in speakers. I'm bringing in um, people that are going to teach um, uh, self-defense courses. Okay. I'm going to bring in um, uh, people that are skilled and trained on helping victims overcome. And then I'll be speaking as well um, as a life coach. And in addition to that, what I'm looking to do is get my books in the hand of every attendee. Wow. So my book, I'm going to be giving to each and every one of the attendees. Okay. And they're going to have that support system. Not only are we going to give them that environment for that weekend, but we're going to also put a list of uh, services and other support systems that they can have in place so that they can move forward. Because okay. I feel like a lot of times these programs limit just to dealing with the issue and then once you've done whatever that retreat or that event is, uh -huh. then the people are left hanging with, okay, well, how do I move forward? How do I, if I left my husband because I was in an abusive relationship, how do I go ahead and start a new life for myself? What are the resources that I can, you know, tap into to be able to start my new life? Okay. And 
I'm going to take my HR consulting business, which is another business that I have, and I'm going to provide actual job training and skills to help them with writing resumes and interviewing skills and different trainings that they may need to really help them become successful. So it's gonna be a full scale, all inclusive healing event. And we're not gonna leave them hanging. Well, so Erica, tell me how many, is there a, a limit as far as the women that you're gonna be helping? Or working so with? for right now, because this is my very first event, mm -hmm. I am only um, opening it up to a 75 people. So it's okay. going to be a small event, small to some, but large for me being that it's my first one. Okay. Um, and we're going to do it for 75 women. Um, and once, the, once we get our feet wet with this mm -hmm. first event, okay. we're going to be doing other events. So I've applied for federal grants. So I'm really literally stepping out on faith doing this. This money is coming from the government. So okay. um, I'm a nonprofit that I don't believe in having a nonprofit where, you know, the board of directors gets all this money and 20% goes to the people. No, 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 no. Okay. We are barely getting paid off of this. This is about the people. That's my heart. That's my passion. That's why I was born to help the people. So my nonprofit is going to be different. It's not okay. something to just funnel money through and look like, you know, I'm living high on the hog. No, this is about helping the people. Right. Um, so we are really literally going to be taking those funds. Mm -hmm. I'm making a very, very minimal salary, but I have to make something because I've got to put work in. So right. um, I'm making a very minimal salary from this. And all of those proceeds that we're going to get from this grant, these grants are going to go directly to those victims. Wow. So how long is this retreat going to be? It's going to be for two days. So we're looking at um, the weekend of October 7th this okay. year. Um, and like I said, it's going to be for the Maryland, Virginia and DC areas to start. Eventually, what I want to do is I want to grow this to a global initiative because okay. these issues are not just based in the US. These issues are not just based in the DMV area. This is everywhere. This is affecting almost every person in some way, shape or form, whether you've experienced it yourself or you right. know somebody that has, you know, it's, it's a very large scale issue that people don't talk about. So we're bringing awareness, but we're right. also bringing the tools and the resources to not just talk about the problem. Let's get you to the place where you're no longer a victim, but you're now a victor. Okay. And that's, that's the whole purpose of why I want to do this. Um, so that's my first event. In addition to that, I've applied for several other grants mm -hmm. and I want to start, um, some programs in the schools. So I'm doing one grant is for children ages zero to 10. Okay. Where I'm going to actually be taking my HR consulting firm and we're going to build a curriculum for people that have been victims of sexual assault okay. um, in the school system so that we can train teachers and administrators on how to identify some possible signs and then what we need to do, what kind of resources we can have for those children. And wow. also children that have been domestic violence victims. Okay. In addition to that, my third one, I know it's a lot. <laughs> my third okay, one is going to be. That's okay. <laughs> it's going to be for college campuses. Okay. And the college campuses is going to be dealing with stalking, um, sexual assault, rape. We're going to focus on the African-American community as well as the LGBTQ community, because two of these, these two groups of people statistically um, do not get the resources from the, uh, the police system and the justice system that they need when they report rapes on okay. campus. And so that's an issue. That's an area where there's a need. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus our energy on those for the college campuses. So I've got quite a few balls rolling and I'm, I'm working on something else. I'm working on something for trafficking victims now. So, okay. <laughs> so, so let me ask you a question. Um, with oath and you're dealing with domestic violence, human trafficking and sexual assault. How do you think those three intertwine with each other? Because I, in my head, I can see all of that. One person having to deal with all of that. So do oh, you yeah. think, how do you think that all puts works together? I think it works together because a lot of, so let's take trafficking for instance. Okay. Majority of based on the statistics that I have read in my research, as I've been preparing, writing these grants, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I have noticed 
synonymously is it's people that are impoverished in, in impoverished impoverished environments okay people that have been either in the justice system like say for instance they're displaced like their parents are, are not involved in their lives maybe their parents are, are drug users and okay. they're in the system okay these people are more susceptible the, uh runaways um right. teen girls that are you know coming from like sexual assault in the home, they're the ones that's running away from home and then they're now susceptible to becoming victims of trafficking. So you'll find that, or domestic violence, for instance, the mom leaves the abusive dad or the dad leaves the abusive mom. It doesn't just, it's not just men. Right. Right. Um, you know, in those situations, they're leaving those environments and now they're out in the open and they're now more susceptible. So when you think about it, trafficking, rape, sexual assault, domestic violence are all intertwined. A lot of times you'll find that, and drug addiction as well, because a lot of times drug addiction plays a part in that too. You know, yeah. you're displaced because, you know, yeah. you, you, you have a substance abuse issue and now you're vulnerable. You're gonna do whatever you gotta do to get that high. So that means right. maybe you're selling your body. Wow. Now, you're, now you're a trafficking victim. You know, so it's, it's so intertwined and I don't think people see the correlation between all right. of those different things, right. exactly. but they are all so interconnected. And as I've been researching and doing my studies, as I'm writing these grants and doing these grant applications, I'm realizing like, wow, this is a big, big issue. And unfortunately, it's not something that there are a lot of known resources for. Okay. I, or if I, there I are resources, that. it's not... Um, it's not like out in the open where people are very aware of it. Or also too, I mean, just looking from the outside, people are afraid to come very afraid. out with that information, um, regardless if it's, it's embarrassing. In the home. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, like if it's in the home and you've got an uncle mm -hmm. or a big brother mm -hmm. or something and you don't want to tell anybody, but you're, you're scared. Yes. You have all of that bottled up inside, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I can see some of those things happening. OK, so, Miss Erica, tell me what inspires you to do this? Um, like I said, a lot of this comes from my own personal experiences, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, the book will be talking about extensively about my journey. Like I'm willing to be that martyr to put myself out there to let people know you're not alone. Yeah. Um, it's something the secrets and the shame is what causes these things to be perpetuated and continue. I feel like when we expose it, you know, the enemy is less likely to want to keep trying you when he exactly. knows that there's a risk of being exposed and being held accountable. So in my book, I talk about my experiences with sexual assault and with incest within my family, how I broke that generational curse, not only over my generation, but also my entire family. I exposed it. It was secrets that were revealed after so many different issues were exposed. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh my God, this, been, this has been going on for generations. And God knows if we even still know everybody that was exactly. affected by it. Exactly. So it's one of those things where when you expose the secrecy and you expose the truth, it's like, okay, now the enemy no longer has that foothold or that stronghold in that area. So I feel like exposure is the key to really breaking these barriers down. I'm one person, I'm one nonprofit. It's not gonna all weigh on my shoulders, but before I leave this earth, I'm gonna do my part to impact as many people on a global scale as I can. That's awesome. I feel like that's what I was born for. I totally agree with you. You've got your hands in so many different pots. Um, uh, let me see. The uh, criteria for the 75 women, since you mm -hmm. narrowed it down, is there yes. a particular thing that they have to do in order to qualify to participate in this retreat? So there's nothing they have to do. What I'm doing is I am literally going with the centers. I'm literally communicating with the, the leads of the center. So say for instance, there's a race, rape crisis center okay. in Maryland or in Baltimore city. I'm going to coordinate with those that head of that center okay. and tell them to give me, okay. So say for instance, give me your most, your 10 most severe cases that you can think of. Someone that's just coming out of, of a domestic violence situation. Mm -hmm. They're in this shelter. They don't have anywhere to go. I want these people. I want the most broken, 
hurt, wounded, damaged person because we're going to build them up and help them become who they're supposed to be. Okay. So how do you plan? You, you just mentioned um, if they don't have any place to go. So say that they participate in the mm -hmm. retreat. What happens after? So they're already a part of these shelters or a part okay. of these programs. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm coordinating with these programs and we're all coming together to come up with opportunities and, and, and resources for them to move forward. So I'm offering my HR services to help them with jobs, okay. with job training, how to write resumes, how to interview, all of those things. And then these, these places have transitional housing set up they have wow. you know other resources counseling okay. therapy i'm a i'm a, a licensed um uh, life coach so i'll be offering my life coaching services um right now i have a support group called oath safe space segments mm -hmm. that i do on every thursday so what i'm going to do is this session's about to end with this current session okay so i'm gonna bring in those victims when we after the retreat they'll be my next session so wow. they'll get one-on-one -on -one coaching from me, and then we're going to connect them with other resources in the community. So if it's therapy, we'll connect them with therapy, uh, therapists in the area. If it's counseling, we'll connect them with counseling. If it's transitional housing that they need, we'll connect them with transitional housing facilities. So it's a full scale. You, I, it's <laughs> just amazing to, um, to see how well thought out and planned. And, I, and I'm quite sure, me, I couldn't do it, I'm telling you. But <laughs> I mean, I applaud you on all of this. Um, just the idea that I feel like it is, this is gonna benefit so many women. Um, and- I can't wait, like I just, um... I just, I feel like, I, I don't know. It's, it's, you know, when it's your purpose, you can't really explain it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of how it is for me. People are like, oh, I can't believe you're going to do all of that. And I'm like, it's just what I'm doing, but yeah. it doesn't look like that big of a deal to me. I mean, I okay. know it's a big deal, but it's, it, to me, it's like, there is something missing. Um, having been in a, in a, in a domestic abuse situation and okay. having been displaced before, Okay. Um, I know what it's like to not have the resources or, you know, you, okay. Okay. So you, you find that a woman has been in, in a domestic violence situation, mm -hmm. you know, they go to, you know, the police, they report it, but then after that, what? Right. So having experienced some of these things and realizing that after that, what part that there's nothing there for people is the reason why I want to make it full scale because that's what people are missing. These programs are so right. limited. They, they, okay, so yes, we'll, we'll give you therapy, but okay, I still need to know, okay, I left my husband because mm -hmm. he was beating me. Right. I need to know how I can stand on my own two feet, especially in most domestic violence situations, you have women that their husbands have intentionally kept them away from working or intentionally right. kept them away from getting skills and things of that nature so how what do you do to help them you can't just say go get a job right i mean you work yes. at mcdonald's but you're not gonna do but so much at mcdonald's right you know so where is what's what's to fill in that gap how can i help them become i tell you to leave your domestic violence situation and then you come out of it and then you have nowhere to go so now you're homeless. Yeah. And now you're now even more exposed and now you can become a trafficking victim. Yeah. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's there like is that, because... there is that, that lack of follow through that frustrates me to the point where I have to do something. It's like, I just have to, <laughs> I can't sleep at night unless I do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is so awesome. Okay, so Erica, before we end, mm -hmm. the book is going into the editors. Which book? Both books? The book is already edited. It's already been proofread. It is going to the formatter. So okay. once it goes to the formatter, I am going to be self-publishing it under Erica Janelle, LLC. Okay. Well, Erica Janelle Publishing, which I have a publishing company. Right. Um, it's going to be published under my publishing company, and it'll be available. I'm doing a hardback book, and it's going to be an ebook. 
but okay. it will be released by the summer. So okay. um, because I'm self-publishing, I have a lot of control over when it's released. So right. editor has done her job. Proofreader has done her job. The formatter is about to do his job. Okay. And then it's all on me at that point. <laughs> okay. okay. Book so tour coming. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I know you're coming back to Florida, right? <laughs> you already know I'm coming to Florida to see my niece P and my people. I love you guys in Florida. You guys, you're like family. Like literally, yes. you guys have been so awesome in really helping me to get my message across even with the music and the music's, you know, a part of the podcast, which has nothing to do with the nonprofit. <laughs> you are so, okay. So Erica, if someone wanted to get in touch with you, whether they wanted to um, join you, help you have some more information about your life coaching, how would we reach you? So if you go, so I have a YouTube channel, it's called Erica Janelle Life Coaching. You can visit me on YouTube, but okay. the best way to reach me would be either to go to my website, which is ericajanelle.com. Okay. That is my life coaching website. If you go to our contact us page and just enter your information and put in the notes that you're looking to connect and looking to maybe find out how you could be a part of it, just sign up right there. I actually respond to every birth person individually myself. So if you do that, I will reach back out to you or you can go to my uh, uh, nonprofit website, which is www.wetaketheoath.org. Um, if you go to that, go to the contact us page, do the same thing. I reach out to everybody individually. So there are ways to connect with me. I also have a link tree where you'll see all of my stuff. You'll see everything, life coaching, music, all the things. <laughs> oh my God. It's just like, it, it, it's just, uh, again, you are a jack of all trades. You are just, and, and everything that I think you're doing is amazing. And if you guys have not heard her sing, <laughs> go to her go go follow her trust me <laughs> so miss erica we will definitely ask you to come back um for sure i can't wait till i have the book in my hand so I, I know can be like... right me too i want my autograph copy you know already you, you already see? know you, you guys listen, see erica Janelle? Listen. yes <laughs> i love you but you know you definitely will have that book because you know what you do is so important as well you reach people and you bring awareness to these types of things if i didn't have people like you in my corner people wouldn't know i existed you know yes, i mean yes granted my, my, YouTube, <laughs> my youtube channel is growing greatly i'm very grateful thank you god um but it's it's you know people we work together to yes. to form that common goal of really just reaching the masses and doing what we've got to do yes. you know i don't ever want to leave this earth and not have done everything I could do in my power to do my part to change it. Um, and so that's awesome. that helps me wake up every day. That's why I get up every day and I'm like, woohoo, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> that is so great. Well, Erica, thank you again for coming back to talk to us. We look forward to speaking to you again because this is, I, I mean, I'm really excited about the retreat that you have planned. Um, I've been waiting on the book, so I'm, I ain't. I know, I know you're so ready. Right. I'm, I'm ready right. too. I'm so ready. This has been, it has been such a challenge. Like, you know, I've had so many obstacles and things come to try to stop me, but I'm like, Psh. God told me to do this. So he's, okay. he's responsible that's right. for making this happen. So I, that's above my pay grade. So Lord, <laughs> this delayed a little bit. That's, you know, that's you okay. see that Lord, I need you to move that. Hey, but you know, and that's what I do. On time. He works in his own <laughs> Exactly. Time. I'm just like, it's yeah. above my pay grade, so I'm not gonna worry about it. It'll happen when he wants it to happen. <laughs> but we are we are almost there. We're like, I can see the finish line. I'm almost there. Okay. <laughs> so if if anything changes as far as the retreat, please let me know if you're adding things, if you're kind of putting mm -hmm. some things on the back burner for the next retreat that you are going to have, which I know that it's coming. Um, please keep in contact with us and let us know. Definitely. Thank you so much for having me. I love you I love so you much, too. DC. <laughs> All right. Thank you. You will be seeing me soon. I, Florida. Beach. Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Nisi P of Nisi P Entertainment. Back to you in the studio.